left of the box. Yeah. So I, I watch the surfs, you know, I don't necessarily get to catch their live streams, but I do watch their clips and especially when he covers Canadian issues, because it's like, well, I want to learn more about Canadian issues, you know, Canada politics are good. And it also helps to watch when they clip Canadian stories because they don't do as well as when they clip other stories. And so I'm like, oh, here are some, he's covering things that I'm going to cover. Yeah. Okay. Maybe takes a little bit of the punch out of what I was going to say, but you know what? I'm not going to knock it because I think these things need attention given to them. I am all for Lance covering the exact same Canadian stories that I cover. There's nothing wrong with that. But you know, I, I feel like this is a little, there's a little bit of an imbalance going on here. I'm feeling like he, he kind of did like a, a sub live stream of of me because it's not Twitter, so it wasn't a sub tweet, as they say. I'm like, the nerve, the nerve. Let's go over it. So we have this here. Doug Ford pushes more beer, but less health care in Canada. Yeah, that's a thing. I know I've been, I've been, I've been covering it a lot, but and, and this first part actually wasn't to do with that. It was to do with like Pierre Polyev worried that our military is too woke. And that was a story I was thinking of covering, but now I don't need to because Lance did such a brilliant job of covering it. I don't need to cover that story anymore. But there's this story about Doug Ford that I still wanted to cover because, you know, it's Ontario and I'm an Ontarian. And it's, it's kind of like what I do on my channel. And so let's... I think if we go there. There's a handful of uh, lefty oh, Toronto no, content let's, let's... My, uh, to people who take summer school for what's available at the time. So a lot of the encampments have said they're going to return once the regular academic season does as well. So that's... I've covered a lot of stories about encampments, um, Canadian university encampments on my channel. Mm -hmm. And if they do come back in the fall, I'm going to be covering them. I even had an interview with a local uh, encampment here at the university in my city. So, you know, I'm doing my part as a Canadian, eh? It's uh, supposed to take place, but for now, a lot of them are getting taken down. And if all of this makes you sad, and don't worry, this is the end of my coverage of Canada, then you can take solace in cheap beer. No, it's not even cheap. More beer, less money for... <laughs> I mean, there's just there's no other way to put this. It's... I, it sucks because you know what, Toronto, there is a handful of, uh, of lefty Toronto content creators and there's a handful of lefty big accounts uh, that are based out of that region. Y'all should be reporting on this and talking about it. It has a. Excuse me, what? You're telling me I should be covering this story in Ontario, are you? Hmm? You, you, you're telling me. First of all, he just mentions Toronto. You know, Ontario is more than a than an envelope for Toronto. There are areas outside of Toronto in this province. I happen to be outside that, and I might not be one of the bigger content creators, but I, I am the largest content creator in my region for political analysis. So I've got some clout here, and I'm doing this, and you know what? Like... Ontario is a big province, you know, it's not just Toronto. Like, Lance, have you even been to Ontario? Like, I've been to BC accidentally, but still, have you even been to Ontario? Do you know what Ontario looks like? Because it's far bigger than Toronto. Hmm? Hmm? Like, I know you're over there on the West Coast and you're getting a lot of that ocean breeze and it can make you a little bit foggy and stuff and that's probably to do with a lot of the marijuana smoking that happens in that province bc is well known for being high all the time all the time and it's like yeah sure it might be relaxing over there you might have a little bit more of a progressive government than we have over here you know but you know what? ontario has good things too like you had the rockies 
But we have drumlins, which are hills that are like teardrop shaped. They're really cool. Uh-huh, we have those. And sure, you might have the ocean over there, but we have the Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. You don't have a great ocean. We have the Great Lakes over here in Ontario. You just have an ocean. Ooh, an ocean, an ocean that covers like, you know, 75% of the world. That's nothing. When we have the Great Lakes, one of them is even named after Ontario. You don't live by the, you know, BC Ocean, the Great BC Ocean. No, you don't get that. But we have the Great Lake of Ontario. And there's also Lake Superior and Erie and... The other ones, like, we have Great Lakes here. You just have an ocean. That's what you have. You don't know, you don't know anything about Ontario. You don't know what I do here. You, you don't know all the effort that I put into this. And, and you might be like, do you know what? They should be covering this. Yeah, I think we should be. I have been. A lot of issues that other way to put this it's i it sucks because you know what toronto there is a handful of, of lefty toronto content creators and there's a handful of lefty big accounts uh, that are based out of that region y'all should be reporting on this and talking about it it has a lot of issues that are uh you know more beer Less youtube money. backing up on us <laughs> i mean there's just there's no other way to put this it's I, it sucks because mm -hmm. you know what, Toronto, there is a handful of, of lefty Toronto content creators and there's a handful of left Toronto, Toronto. No, it's Toronto. I'll say Toronto. I'll put the second T in there. The big accounts uh, that are based out of that region. Y'all should be reporting on this and talking about it. It has a lot of issues that are, uh, you know, capable of doing some numbers first off like this, this, uh, it's Doug Ford. So, you know, you can right away. What? I can cover Doug Ford and get numbers on my videos? What? <laughs> Have you seen the numbers I get on my videos? So, so I'm going to follow Lance's advice. And this video, when I clip it, it's going to get numbers. Because he knows that he's a real YouTuber. I'm not. Mm-mm. No, no. I can't get numbers. Like, yeah, yeah. Cover Doug Ford. You're guaranteed numbers. Uh-huh. That's how it works. That's how it works. Absolutely. You just, you just throw Doug Ford up on the screen and you get so many numbers. You just, you know, your, your channel just pops off. That's how it works. That's how it works. Doing some numbers first off, like this, this, uh, it's Doug Ford. So, you know, you can right away, it's the brother of crack smoking mayor, the, well, ex crack smoking mayor of Toronto. Uh, you see, that's how little Lance, you know, about Ontario, that you still have to refer to Rob Ford, the former crack smoking mayor of, on Tor of Toronto, because, you know, that's all you think of when you, when you think of, you know, Ontario, you don't know what's happening here. And why would I go after one of his relatives who has long ago passed away from, you know, health conditions and stuff, and it's tragic, when he, when Doug Ford has living family members that are very worth going after, like his daughter. This is real. So, new. In his latest grift, Doug Ford brought his daughter's Kai Kai cookies, we'll get into this in just a moment, to Halifax as a thank you gift for Nova Scotia Premier Tim Houston and says that Kyla Ford sends these cookies to all the premiers. And so we'll just... This is uh, Premier Houston's gift here. Yeah, what's in okay. the What is that? Well, is okay, full disclosure, okay? It's my daughter's cookie company and she sends it out to the premiers. Kai Kai cookies, best cookies ever in the whole world, but uh, that's the gift uh, to Premier Houston and his lovely wife. So we'll, we'll be eating well. Thank you. Which way do we go? Around here. Thanks. So yeah. So he's uh, promoting his daughter's business here. Now, what some of you may not know, but if you live in Ontario, you would know this, is that she opened up this business of hers, these Kai Kai cookies. Now. You might not be able to see it, but on some of these areas, if you look up in the corner, like right here, there's an odd spelling of cookie going on. It's, it's, it's odd. It's a little odd. And if we scroll down here, you might even see like an email address. If we 
go right down oh here we go info at kai kai cookies now let's see if i can make that a lot bigger for you to see look at that kai cookies isn't spelt with a k no no you see when she opened her business while Doug Ford was in office, instead of doing the fatherly thing, like maybe saying, you know what, dear, I love you and I support you and I think this is a good thing, but having the acronym for your business being KK Cookies and Cookies with a K looks a little off. <laughs> She had KK cookies, cookies with a K. Kai Kai cookies. That's, that's, and, and Doug Ford is now promoting. They got a lot of pushback from that. Shocking. And Kyla was like, oh, it's Kai Kai. It's just my nickname. It's my nickname. That's all it is. And then it thought it would be a little cutesy to then spell the cookies, the cookies <laughs> with a K. So shouldn't she be like, cookie calories don't count. I think she spelled these wrong then. You know, those should both be K's as well. <laughs> and so they did a rebranding thing. So it's no longer Kai Kai cookies, but it's um, Kai Kai's cookies and sweet treats. Cookies spelt with a C. But you can still see it all over the web page where it was KKK cookies. <laughs> You know, why go after his crack-smoking brother who's passed away years ago when you have this? When you have this that's happening now. That Doug Ford is never, like, aware enough while in office to take his daughter aside and be like, hmm, that looks bad. That looks a little bad there. Conservative, part of Ford Nation, mm -hmm. uh, and they've uh, they've done a really good job at basically gutting as many social safety nets as they can uh, after privatizing as many industries as they can, and they finally just got to booze. And most of the research that I've done on this has shown that it's mm -hmm. going to take about two point five billion dollars away from money that was going into uh, health. Do you know where else you could find that information? If you watch my channel, mm -hmm. I've been covering the story from the beginning. But oh no, I'm Lance and I'm just sitting here all chill, never looking at the camera. And like, look at my dog over there in the corner. Oh, isn't Chico so cute? Yeah, he's so cute. Now I'm in BC, so I'm just going to like step outside and get high from all the marijuana smoke around me. And you know, life is great. You know, got the ocean over there. Whichever side, you know, just life is, you know, Ontario. Who needs to know Ontario? It's not like half the country lives in Ontario or anything. You know, what's the big thing about Ontario? No, no, I'm just going to sit here and never look at the camera and pretend, you know, I'm just looking this way. And it's like, no, if only there was like content creators over in like that Toronto province that could cover this because it would totally get numbers like this. This is like some solid information here that people could be getting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, you know, if only there were content creators over the lefty content creators over in Ontario, Toronto. You know, it's not Toronto, Ontario. It's Ontario, Toronto. Um, you know, if only there was somebody over there covering because this is like a big story. It'll give you numbers, It'll give you big numbers if you just, you know, if you just do what I say. Mm-hmm. 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 I see you, Lance. Mm-hmm. No, I I I felt that. I felt it. In my soul. I felt it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, if only somebody was covering this, you know, over in the um, province of Toronto. Because, yeah, yeah, it'd be, it'd be good, it'd be good. Huh? I hear you, I hear you. <laughs> so why don't we go over some of the shenanigans that Doug Ford has recently pulled off with the LCBO? So the LCBO is the... Uh, the liquor stores here in Ontario and they were provincially run and that meant a lot of money would go to the province through them because you know the profits would go into the coffers and all that sort of stuff well you see Doug Ford has done this thing that conservatives do called privatizing mm -hmm. and he sold off a whole bunch of them and a lot of people are going to lose good paying jobs because of this 
and a lot of people are losing their security and the province is going to be losing a ton of money. So while they still can and make a point, um, the, the union for the LCBO has gone on strike. And Doug Ford is very concerned this summer that because of this strike, you won't be able to get drunk. Mm -mm. No, no. Make this summer an Ontario made summer. Our new interactive map shows thousands of convenient options where you can still buy beer, wine, spirits, and other drinks across the province. Check out a local brewery or winery for some fantastic Ontario-made products near you and check back for more options at convenience stores, grocery stores, big box stores. We'll get a little bit more into that in a moment. Starting later this summer. Um... And he has his little ad here. Now, you see, the date of this is uh, July 8th. You know, they only went on strike like a few days before that. And he already has an interactive map for where you can buy your booze that fast. It's almost like he was thinking ahead of time, you know, that he was being so horrible that they could potentially go on strike. So why not? You know spend money on making this interactive map now so that it's ready to go as soon as they go on strike so that people can get their booze and not be too inconvenienced you know it's funny how fast that came out considering there's still no map for where people can find an open er because <laughs> uh especially in northern areas the emergency rooms tend to get closed because they don't have enough staff which means if you're in a crisis your SOL and even the op the ERs in my area going to one you can be there for a day trying to get seen you know family doctors a map for family doctors would be really good because uh let's see where is it where is it? look at this look at this number of Ontarians without family doctors reaches 2.5 million college says now, you see, the thing is, is that number doesn't include people who have a family doctor that they don't want to keep for various reasons. Sometimes it's because they live in a different city because they moved. And instead of trying to get a new doctor, they stuck with their old doctor. So they have to travel over an hour to go see their family doctor. Or maybe their family doctor is someone who they don't feel comfortable with because maybe their doctor isn't friendly towards queer folks or people with mental health issues. You get that a lot with family doctors who have no understanding of mental health issues and that becomes a problem. It does, you know. So this 2.5 million doesn't include all of the other people who want a new family doctor but can't get one and are forced to stay with the doctors they don't like or don't get much access to. So this is this is a big undercount. And you see, Lance would know that if he knew anything about this province. Like, can he even name one city outside of Toronto? Hmm? Because I can name two cities outside of Victoria, because there's Vancouver and Burnaby. That's a city in BC. So let's let's watch this little ad. And do you know what you know what's so funny about these ads? <laughs> They're tax paid for. <laughs> so not only are we losing billions of dollars with him moving alcohol into convenience stores a year early. Um, he's also then using taxpayer money for these ads. It's summertime in Ontario. That means more time outside with family and friends at a neighborhood barbecue or a camping trip. Or maybe his mega, um, oh, cottage that he just made. He made like a mega cottage beside his old cottage and he's always at the cottage. So, you know, he's saying family and camping trip, but really what he means is like, when he goes to his cottage, especially during crises, which he tends to go up to his cottage a lot, a lot. Even though LCBO workers are on strike, there's still plenty of options for you to buy beer, wine, cider, coolers, and eat. He didn't toast those buns. 
How, how can you have hamburgers from a barbecue without toasting the buns? That 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 is sacrilege right there. You can't not toast the buns. You need toasty buns when you're having barbecue hamburgers. Even spirits, including products made right here in Ontario. You know, funny thing about the spirits is that there's going to be so many more of those in this province after the speed limit on the 401 gets increased to 110 kilometers and all those ERs are closed and there's a lot more drunk people. There's going to be so much spirits here in Ontario. We've created this handy new map that shows what stores are open and what they sell. Say you want to buy some local Ontario craft beer. Just zoom in on where you are. It's just so cute though, actually, if we go back. Look at how he types. You can tell he's used to sitting in front of a computer and just a little doop 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 doop. You want to buy some local Ontario craft beer? Just zoom in on where you are, click the filter for beer, and look at all the fantastic options that pop up. And look at all those yellow dots which show Ontario made products. Click on one and you'll see the store's so this interactive map is available for people who want alcohol. Not everyone in this province needs a map that will help them find alcohol. Not everyone drinks, you know, age restrictions, people who just generally speaking don't drink. Everyone needs access to a family doctor in emergency rooms. You know, there's no emergency where you need to get to the liquor store. It might be like, oh, shucks darn, we're al alcohol for the party. But that's a little different than, I'm having a heart attack and there's no ER open. You know, so it, it would be nice if those maps existed for things that actually matter, as opposed to some people who might be bummed if they're short a few coolers for their party. Name and address as well as what they sell. And keep in mind, LCBO convenience outlets are still open with plenty of local products that you can find by clicking the right filter here. Folks, it's just that simple. I hope you'll all give it a try and take the opportunity to support Ontario. Yes, people of Ontario, go out and get drunk so you'll vote for me again because that's pretty much the only thing that seems to work for him. <laughs> Every election, there's always something about beer and alcohol. Producers and their fantastic Ontario made products this summer. Let's make it an Ontario made summer. And remember, in just a few months, convenience. So in just a few months, convenience and grocery stores will have alcohol. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Just all that convenient alcohol there. Um, about that. Shelves at grocery stores empty as LCBO strike shows no sign of ending. Yeah, this looks almost communist there with the uh, lack of product and shelves. What is this, a socialist province? Can't even get alcohol? Convenience stores and grocery stores across the province will be able to sell a whole range of drinks. So check back on this map for more options as they appear. Enjoy and remember to drink responsibly. <laughs> yeah, because that's going to be your only outlet in the despair of this province, you know. It's very important that you have alcohol on hand so when you gash your hand open and you can't go to the emergency to get stitches, you can pour some alcohol on it to make sure that there's no uh, infection. <laughs> so we just, ooh, look, we just scroll in. Oh, this would be like, if these were family doctors, so helpful, so helpful. And then we can do this and this. Ah, yeah. Convenience outlets. Ooh, that's very convenient. Look at how many there. That's so convenient that I would just have to travel an hour to get to this convenient location. Oh, there, there's one for spirits. Might become a spirit on the way there with no ERs on the way that would be open and what's this 
I know there's a fair bit of ciders, but those are in grocery stores. Like wine is already in grocery stores, the same with some ciders. And there are local breweries, which I do encourage people to go to because you can find some fantastic beers that way. I went to one once. It was, I was waiting for something and it was really cold outside. But I felt like I should buy something while I was in there. And so they had this oatmeal coffee beer. And I'm like, I need, I, I, I don't drink, but I need this. I need to know what this is. And the woman said, you know, I can give you a sample. I'm like, no, no, please, no sample. If you do, I won't buy it. <laughs> and so I bought a bottle of this coffee oatmeal beer. Could taste the coffee. You could taste the oatmeal. You could taste the beer. Somehow they were all three different sensations, which was just really odd. And so here is Colin DeMello from Global News. New, the Ford government is taking its battle with the LCBO union to the TV airwaves. And that's where we get back to who's funding these ads? Right, it's um, taxpayers. LCBO CEO, George, I almost saw Soros there. George Soros, no, George Soleras voiced a simple looking commercial and asked the union to return to the bargaining table. I am George Soleas. Soleas. George Soleas. Not George Soros. George Soleas. And CEO of the LCBO. I want to thank you for your patience during OPSU's strike. The strike did not need to happen. We have come to the table with many employee-focused offers. But OPSU walked away over where ready-to-drink beverages can be sold. Let's end this strike. Opsu, it's time to respond to the offer and join us at the table. We are all waiting. Then the union and Colin follows it up by saying the union today claimed that the Ford government is not negotiating in good faith after the province decided to speed up the introduction of ready to drink beverages in grocery stores. Those drinks could be on sale at 450 grocery stores as early as next week. Now, keep in mind, he was spending approximately a billion dollars to get this alcohol into convenience stores and big box stores a year early. That's all, just a year early. And yet Toronto was just hit with a billion dollar disaster. Funny where that money goes. And this is from Opsu. Uh, today, Ford Nation announced accelerated expansion of alcohol sales at grocery stores. Ford has forced this strike to push his alcohol everywhere agenda to dismantle the LCBO while handing billions in public revenues over to the big box billionaires. Uh, Ford got the help of the Westin. Now, for those of you who watch my channel, so not Lance, uh, you would know that the Westons own Loblaws and Shoppers Drug Mart and have been making a mint, a mint with the skyrocketing grocery prices. Well, now, funny how this happens, they're going to be making a lot of money with alcohol being introduced into their stores. Mm -hmm. It's not the people who benefit from this because now those profits are just going to corporate billionaires as opposed to the province to solve things like a billion dollar flood in Toronto. So Ford got the help of the Weston family members like Claudia Hepburn, who sits on the LCBO board of directors. The, the Westons are worth an estimated 10.8 billion. Every single person reading this is infinitely closer in circumstance to any given LCBO worker on the picket line near you. Big box billionaires have Ford's ear, expediating his rush to put booze everywhere. LCBO is not just another retailer, it's a treasured public asset, improving the lives of Ontarians by putting 2.5 billion back in our public services. We're ready to head back to the bargaining table as soon as Ford and the LCBO are prepared to bargain in good faith for a future that will protect good jobs and protect public revenues, as well as create more stable and permanent jobs. It's a future we wish for everyone. 
Uh, it's a future we wish for you. Supporting the LCBO workers reinforces that vision of a province where we protect and invest in good jobs and public services like hospitals and childcare, not schemes to make big box billionaires richer. Because, again, there's so many, as Lance was suggesting, there are so many layers to this. Because it's not just the fact that we have people, like the money isn't going to be going back into public services, but so many people will be losing their jobs. Now, Doug once said that nobody would be laid off when he was premier of this province, which has already proven to be wrong on so many levels. But it's so hard to get a job these days that's stable and reliable. And he's taking that away from people by doing this. And then when they need to go to an ER and a lot of their extra coverages are no longer covered because they don't have a work insurance program and there's no ER open, well, then they're just SOL. That should be the name of Doug Ford's new liquor, just SOL. And there's also this article here from Press Progress uh, Doug Ford alcohol privatization plan will cost Ontario taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars. Now it's forcing LCBO workers to go on strike. I won't read over all of this because it's a press progress article, so it's long. I will try to remember to link it in the description box below so that you can uh, read it. Yeah, so the Doug Ford government is saying the government claims its plan to privatize alcohol retail sales is really about delivering choice and convenience to shoppers. There's no reason why Ontario consumers shouldn't enjoy the same convenient shopping experience as Canadians in every other province when buying some wine for their holiday party or a case of beer or a seltzers on their way to the cottage, Doug Ford was quoted in the press release announcing the plan. Yeah, you see, the thing is, is that they were still fully accessible. Like, they have delivery services, for crying out loud. Like, it, it's what? So you have to travel 15 minutes as opposed to five minutes? Uh, let's see. Those industry and partners include big business lobby groups like Retail Council of Canada, whose members include Loblaw, Metro, Sobeys, Walmart, and Costco, as well as the Convenience Industry Council of Canada, whose members include Loblaws, Circle K, and several oil and gas companies that operate convenience stores, all of whom stand to generate significant province, profits as a result of Ford's plan to privatize alcohol sales. Uh huh. And so do you know who else suffers when this happens? It's those little breweries I was just telling you about. You know, the little craft breweries in this area, the little independent shops. When suddenly all of this alcohol is available in the big box stores and they can undersell it than what these craft breweries would be, a lot of them go out of business. It's the same reason like why we don't have many um, small grocery stores anymore, like local grocery stores, is because the big box stores came in here and pushed them all out of business. And this doesn't even lead to cheaper alcohol. <laughs> it's going to be expensive alcohol. So what labor experts are saying, labor experts agree the strike was provoked by the Ford government's decision to privatize alcohol sales in Ontario. The union is using the collective bargaining process to resist privatization of the LCBO. So it's this union that is fighting for the people of this province, not Doug Ford, this union. Because the privatization of the LCBO means so much money will not be going into back into public services. Instead, Doug Ford will be more than happy to use taxpayer money to make ads on why it's good that such a small percent of people who regularly need alcohol so much they can't travel more than 15 minutes should be able to get it. Like that's the thing that Doug Ford has done over and over again is he's prioritized things that don't matter to people's well-being. It's just a little convenience here or there. And meanwhile, the things that matter never get acknowledged. And you would know that if you watch my channel because probably 50% of the stories I cover are about Doug Ford. Oh, this is a fun little ad. So this ad is from the union. So new Opsu is on the air with commercial amid LCBO strike. It features a supposed grocery store CEO who is clearly meant to be Galen Weston. The government also cut out uh, with a fun 
ad featuring the LCBO CEO urging unions to uh, return to talks. So this is uh, funded by the union. Hello, poors. I'm Callum. I may be rich, but I'm drowning in profits. That's why I want a big slice of the LCBO. Sure, they invest $2.5 billion in your community. That's basically nothing to me. Just like you, I struggle to have enough yachts. Just like you. I'm sad inside my mansion. <laughs> I worked really hard to be born into money. Don't I deserve more of yours? I mean, what's a billionaire gotta do to get some extra zeros around here? Stop funding public services. Start funding me. No, I get it. I just don't see why we need schools and hospitals. Pick one. Who's going to both? Then the other area that is going to be struggling because of this, LCBO strike latest. Tourism industry struggling as convenience store applications pour in. Uh, tensions between the Ford government and union representing more than 9,000 LCBO workers continue to rise as the provincial liquor store strike enters its 12th day. Government-run LCBO stores across Ontario have been closed since July 5th when unionized workers... So, that ad, this ad here from Doug Ford, this was released July 8th. It's so summertime. In three days, he cut together this ad and got the interactive web page going. Is that what you're saying? In three days, he did all of that? Uh, to allow corner stores, blah, blah, blah. Bargaining has not resumed since the strike began as both sides raised their rhetoric. Ontario Tourism Industry and Association says it fears profits during peak season could be ruined. Again, it's just a lot of people not looking at bigger pictures when it comes to a lot of this stuff how many different layers of people suffer when the government does things that force unions to have to go on strike and quite literally this union is striking for the well-being of the people in this province because access to alcohol isn't what the well-being that people need access to emergency rooms and family doctors is and it was the profits from the lcbo that was going to help with that and that's now not going to be available and instead it's going to be going to billionaires so my message to lance pretend i'm a premier and you're the prime minister and maybe stick to your lane council of federation uh, wrote to trudeau asking him to refrain from unilateral actions and this is another story I'm not going to get into detail of it now because I've covered this type of thing over and over again. A lot of the premiers are mad that the federal government is stepping around them to get things done because uh, the premiers have been blocking any progress whatsoever and leaving Justin Trudeau with no choice. And I don't like a lot of what Justin Trudeau does. Anyone who watches my channel knows. But, you know, I'm glad when he sidesteps the premiers in order to work with the cities to get more affordable housing to work on environmental issues and all that sort of stuff um and then like the bullies they are they cry as soon as they don't get their way you need to stick to your lane justin trudeau how dare you do anything for the people that's my beef with lance <laughs>